Hi, this video follows straight on from my previous one on different types of communication platform and evaluating the pros and cons of each. So I, I realized after making that I didn't perhaps properly define what a communication platform is. So just to be really clear, it's where you have this collection of tools which are hosted online in some way. And these tools enable information sharing to occur so you can send messages, send photos, send files in some cases and it's hosted online, so email, social media, voice communication, and websites are examples we looked at before. So we have communication platforms like before I mentioned, but within those, there may still be multiple communication channels, and that's the focus for this video. So a channel is just a particular method of sharing information, data, and media. Information is just data with some context, by the way, and media, are things like photos, videos, files even. To illustrate this with an example, YouTube is a platform with multiple different communication channels which can be used by yourself or by a company. Now I can see that <laughs> you've got YouTube channels like my channel, your channel, which are pages to share videos which you can argue are communication channels as well but we can think even more broadly because the fact that you can post videos on YouTube is an example of YouTube having that as a possible communication channel. You might choose to make videos and share information in that way. Equally, you might try and communicate via the comment section. So that is another example of a channel on YouTube in this sense in the yellow box. Another example might be being able to post updates under the community tab. And finally, the description on YouTube is another example of where you can share information. And because it's different to the other examples, you could consider it to be a separate channel. Now, most of these examples can be either public or private. If you say you made a video, you can post it as private and keep it within a certain number of people. And so that's really our focus from now on, thinking about how can you best utilize the different channels, in particular private versus public channels. So private channels are good for where you want to discuss sensitive or personal topics. An example of this might be direct messages on social media. Another example might be a live chat function on a website where you can speak to an individual as opposed to just posting a public comment. So if you've got a question which you need to give your details out, if you want to ask for help about something, you might want to do it privately as opposed to publicly. Here's an example of actually a public bit of communication on Twitter between a user who have blacked out and TalkTalk Talk, who are an internet provider. I picked TalkTalk Talk because I figured a lot of people would complain on a daily basis and the first person here is asking or is saying their internet's down and they don't know what's going on. TalkTalk Talk have replied saying well I want to see if it's working can you DM us so we can check the line. Now DMing is short for direct messaging as I'm sure you probably know. So TalkTalk Talk are probably trying to take this away from the public facing Twitter feed to avoid the user disclosing things like their location and their name and an email address and stuff like that. So it's trying to protect that potentially personal information. But also you could slightly more cynically say they may be asking to go to the DMs because it means nobody else can see the user complaining. A company does not want someone publicly complaining, they'd much rather handle it in a quiet way where nobody else can see. So private channels give you as a as a person setting up the channel they give you control over how many people can see the information and control is very important to lots of companies but this is time consuming because you're speaking to individuals in most cases and also if the individual hasn't asked you to message them it might be quite unpopular because people don't usually appreciate getting unsolicited private messages that means unsolicited means they haven't asked for it and so it might be seen as spam it might affect your reputation so looking more at public channels you might have to think about in an exam what is most suitable for a particular example public channels are anything which can be seen by a large audience so for example status updates on social media which is where you post a message publicly which anybody can see and these are quite good for announcements because like I say anyone can see it who visits your page 
So for example, again, I have one from Twitter just because it's easy for me to get a screenshot of. Here is Tesla announcing some report. It's got quite a lot of retweets and comments and likes on Twitter. And so that's can be a positive because users are often able to react and share and leave comments when it's a public update. I've put that in sort of orange color because it's not always a positive. It definitely can be if, if what you're posting about is quite popular. It can also be seized upon and anything public can clearly be criticized and people might share and react and leave comments in a more negative way, which again can hurt your reputation in some cases. And like with direct messages, if you are constantly posting status updates, which are not important and people don't care about, that would definitely be seen as spam. I'm sure, well, I say I'm sure. Again, if you have social media, there's a good chance you have followed a particular company and then soon unfollow them because they post all the time and it's not very interesting and it just puts you off a little bit. So often these public status updates are best kept infrequent and only for really important things.